Hi ho! Good morning, my people. So today we're going to be doing an updated video for fitting of the Sennheiser HC25 damping kit because uh, the old one kind of worked with the older models. Slightly different technique for doing the new ones and uh, some things to look out for. But essentially, you will get a small bag containing some pre marked bits of bitumen and some lead for weight. Uh, tools you will require for this will be a small flathead screwdriver, a T6 screwdriver, a bit more difficult to find, but uh, you can pick them up cheap on eBay, that kind of stuff if you haven't got one already, and a sharp knife. I'm using a scalpel, a craft knife, something like that. You can use scissors, but this stuff will gum up your scissors, so uh, ideally a knife and some kind of cutting mat type thing. Okay. Uh, what we'll do as well, which will be quite interesting, is we'll do, we'll use the little uh, the rig here and we will measure before and after to see the difference in the frequency response. But another thing I was thinking was, I've got some old HD25s, which are made pre-2016, and some of the new ones. And the new ones, they've updated the driver. And I get a lot of people say, oh, they don't sound as good. So I'm going to test them and we'll see if they do sound the same. With the HD25, more than any other headphone I've tested. They really need a burning, like the diaphragm needs to kind of loosen up before they sound their best. So what will often happen is someone's got an old pair of H25s which have been used for years and they love the sound, they put on the new ones and they sound totally different because they haven't yet burnt in. Also the pads over time, I don't know if you can see, they flatten down, which again affects the sound. So old pads sound different from new pads. And then as the pads kind of break down, I, I know people stick these in the washing machine and stuff to uh, kind of get them to squish down a bit. Uh, but the sound will change. So I would say, uh, very interesting. I've given these a bit of a burn in. I've let them kind of run for a, for a day or so. So they're hopefully pretty burnt in. Uh, and so yeah, so we'll do a frequency plot, compare the old ones and the new ones. And we'll also do a frequency plot before and after fitting the damping kit. I'm just gonna find that my cutting mat and lay it all out. We'll fit this. I'll show you how to get these apart. Um, back in a second. Actually, before I get too carried away, let's measure. Uh, so I've got the new ones on there now, and it's all set. Let's uh, take a measurement. Okay, so here is our graph for the old ones. Pretty flat here, starts to drop off about 100 hertz. It's probably partially because you're not getting a great seal on the rig. Uh, and then the top end, pretty tidy, no major, no major peaks. Try the older ones. I'm going to try and get these in roughly the same place on the rig. Okay, so yeah, so as I said, the pads have kind of flattened down on these old ones. So that might get a better seal. Let's measure again. Start measuring. Okay, so these are the older ones, and you do have a slightly di in a similar, very similar, but a slightly different sound signature. So on these older ones, as I said, they've had a bit more, bit more use, but the top end is a bit smoother up here. You haven't got this this peak around eight or nine kilohertz. But you have got more of a dip, about four k. So similar, similar kind of sound, but a little bit less in the bass area. But some of, a lot of this will be down to pads. You know, uh, if you change the pads, it will probably bring that back in line. Next, we're gonna fit the kit, and then we'll take some more measurements and see what that's like. All right, cool. All right, let's do this thing. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it in shot. I've got an unnecessarily sturdy Manfrotto tripod supporting a. It's <laughs> essentially like a GoPro type thing on there. It's just just so so unnecessarily sturdy. <laughs> but it lets me get a nice boom shot in over the thing so you can see what's going on. Right, okie pokey, let's uh let's do this thing. So you have your twenty sixteen or later HD twenty fives. Twenty twenty or later, you're in the danger zone. because uh, they, they changed the design slightly more in twenty twenty. So T6 screwdriver to remove the cable clamp. As you saw, the ear caps just slide right off the end of the arms. It's probably worth actually undoing this before you slide the other arm off because some of them haven't got enough enough slack to get this off without removing the cable clamp. All right, so that's off there. Headband. 
Don't need that for the moment. Pads, finger, Corio Yonde, uh, um, and uh, psh, pull that off, like that. Dust, dust cap as well, the pad, dust cap. Right, so now we've got drivers. Now we're gonna take our small flat head screwdriver. One thing I wanna note on the older ones, you could just press on that, this driver would pop out. You can do that on this one, but there's a really good chance of breaking it, so don't do that. Don't press on that. Okay. What you want to do is lever it up from this side. So you'll notice there is an inner ring, a middle ring, and an outer ring, which is the actual air cup. So you want to get your screwdriver in this bit here, just in between the outer casing and the driver. Get it in there, and you'll hear a little pop. And just work this round, levering up. So probably every quarter turn, give it a little lever and hopefully it'll go pop. And eventually it'll all kind of pop out. You see you've got about a millimeter of poppage there. That's now safely removed. So the key to this is not flexing this unit. So we're just levering it up gently, working our way around and then removing it carefully. So that's the driver out. Inside here, you've got some felt which absorbs the sound coming out through these holes on the back of the driver and stops it from bouncing back through. What we're going to do is we're going to replace this felt with some bitumen type damping material which will stick on the inside. Now then in your kit you'll get a pre-marked thing like this that you have to cut out. You'll notice you've got a left and a right half here. And if you look in there you have that with the, with the kind of same shape there. You'll notice all these triangles fit in there nicely. We, did a, we have had some people who didn't realize until after they tried to jam the wrong size ones in the wrong holes. So these are left and right handed. Okay, so inside the air cap you'll see each side you've got three little indentations next to the ribs and that's where these go. So they've got like a self-adhesive backing. So peel that off, stick it in the appropriate hole and just kind of smush it all down in there. And we're going to rinse and repeat. Removing the backing, sticking it in, smushing it down. Ugh. Sorry, I'll stuck that one in straight. Ugh. They can be removed, but they're pretty sticky. There we go. So just kind of sticking it in there. You never guess what I'm going to do now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remove the backing, stick it on, smush it down. You, 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 you're getting this now. It's like, it's like you've been doing it before. All right. Cool, that's one side. Let's do the other side. So I'm just cutting around the pre-marked lines. Now then, if you have the HD25 aluminium, these will fit as well. What you need to do is when you cut it out, you don't actually cut out these individual triangles. You just have the left and the right halves and they'll stick in because on the aluminiums, they don't have these ribs. So there's no need to cut it into individual triangles. And again, with the aluminiums, there's a lot of smushing involved because they've got like a stepped surface on the inside so you really need to kind of work it in there and make it conform to the shape of the inside of the ear cap. The effect that this has on the sound is very minimal. Like I doubt we would see pretty much of anything on the graphs. What this does is it helps stop resonances and stuff so it gives you slightly more space in there because we've taken out this big lump of felt we're putting in something a bit smaller but it also damps the ear cup so the ear cup doesn't kind of ring or bounce sound back through the driver. So again, it's, it's very subtle, but while you're in there, you might as well do this. Okay, so that's the actual inside of the ear cup. Next, we're gonna work on the actual driver itself. And then you'll notice that there's two semi-circular pieces that are pre-marked that we haven't used yet for the driver. And uh, just take those off now. And where they wanna go is top and bottom. As we're looking at this. So on the top there, damp the casing the actual enclosure of the driver. This bit probably has more of a, oh, my phone, you should always turn your phone off. Uh, yeah, this bit probably has more of an effect. It has a kind of a dual purpose. So you're, you're damping the back of the, the enclosure. Also, these press up against these parts inside the casing a little bit and the edges and just give a bit more support uh, on the, on this area. So it gives the driver something a little bit more to push against, I would have thought. Next, 
We've got these self-adhesive lead strips. You should have four for each driver, a total of eight. And then in the centre here, you'll notice that there are these holes. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover these two partially with the lead strips and we're not going to cover the top and the bottom one. Now then these lead strips are literally kind of weights. We're just adding weight just behind where the driver is. So as the diaphragm moves in and out, this has got more inertial mass and it's less likely to wobble the driver and more likely to create sound. So it just kind of adds, puts a bit more energy into the actual diaphragm. Behind where we're sticking these, you have also got the magnet. Now then, lead is slightly diamagnetic. I've really should find out. But yeah, it's only slightly diamagnetic, so it may have some kind of effect on the on the magnet as well, pushing some of that magnetic flux back towards the voice core. But I, I, I don't know, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's pretty weak, so probably not. Mainly just the weight. All right, so there we go. So we've got two directly touching the pole and partially covering these base ports. And we've got two next to the bits of damping material that we've stuck on top there, leaving these two top and bottom ones completely open. So essentially, by putting these weights on, it normally kind of increases the base a little bit. And by partially covering this base port, we bring it back down again. Now that sounds like madness, but <laughs> what it basically gives you is more controlled bass. So you don't want a big boomy headphone, but you want kind of better square wave performance, that kind of thing. So these will help it do more accurate bass by covering the port slightly, stops it from increasing the bass too much. Now then, this is the safe part of this operation, and I would not recommend carrying on, but I know some of you will anyway. Um, we, here at Custom Cans, we add an extra bit of lead to these, but there are dangers involved, I would say probably one in every couple of hundred pairs, you'll get a driver that dies doing this. So it's not without its risks. What you need to do next is lever up the grill here and remove felt. So we just hook our little um, screwdriver under there. Uh, careful not to damage the diaphragm or anything while you're in there. And then this thing where we remove the grill, the, the newest ones, the, the ones sort of after 2020, to be honest, it's, it's normally all right. Um, I'm not saying it's not without risk, but it's not too bad. On the older ones, the pre-2016, they had very, very thin voice core wires, and uh, which kind of dangled down here, and it was often possible to damage those if you weren't careful, and then that driver would be dead. On these ones, they are tucked away and glued in there. The glue is what breaks them now if you flex them, but as long as we're careful, we don't remove this, we don't flex the casing too much, you're probably all right. So just, as you're sticking it on, just be gentle. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I preformed it into a ring before sticking it in place. So that one basically goes around the edge of the actual driver in there. And then we'll put the, the this thing back in, a bit of felt around the edge. Again, being super careful, treating these with the utmost respect until they're back in one piece. No need to do that part of the operation. It just adds a little something, something, but it's dangerous, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm warning you, <laughs> be warned. So there we go, so we have that all back together. We're gonna do away with the felt, because we don't need that, and we're gonna pop that back together. <laughs> Click, and that's done. And then you can put these put these back together and, uh, and test them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stop the cameras for a moment. I'm gonna finish putting the damping kit in the other one, get them back on the test rig, and we'll see what the difference might be. Alrighty then, that's all fitted and back on the rig. Let's do the nerdy thing. So, uh, as you can see, this is the graph for them before the damping kit was added. Let's take another measurement. And here's the second measurement. As you can see, it's just a little bit flatter across the, the middle here. So it doesn't have this little hump. It doesn't slowly drop off. So you just basically get a flat response down to about 100 hertz and you do pick up a little bit more in the sub bass region. You've got these peaks at the top here are slightly smoothed off. So you lost a couple of decibels up there in the, in the peaks. So it's just slightly flatter. One thing that we do recommend trying is removing the dust filters on the inside. I'm just gonna see if you can get a measurable difference by doing that. So just take the dust filter off. It also should give me a chance to show you how to put the pads back on. The way we do it is we slide one side on, 
like that and just kind of maneuver it over and then we put our finger inside and just lever the, the edge over like that and then I can do that in a couple of seconds but most humans will take a bit longer just I've done that probably 20,000 times I don't know all right measure again see if there's any measurable difference just by removing the dust cap start measuring hasn't affected stuff that much it's one of those things where frequency plots are not everything i'm sure if you remove that and have a listen you can hear a slight difference but yeah so it's, it's minimal minimal the change that you're picking up from from doing that it could even just be to do with the, the angle that i've got it on the on the rig and one more thing which may be interesting let's try old pads versus new pads and the oh so Old pads versus new pads, the old kind of squished down ones, are pretty similar right along the base. And then you get some changes up in the treble region. So you've got an additional peak up here, quite high, around 16K, probably up at the top of most humans' hearing range. And then you've got a little bit more of a peak here and more of a lump around 3K. So yeah, so changing from old pads and new pads you'll probably notice a slight change in sound and then gradually as the pads break down, it'll go back to the sound that you remember. But yeah, it was quite interesting. So it does seem that there is, is a bit of difference in sound between the older pre-2016 ones and the newer ones. It's not drastic. Yeah, let's just get that back up again just so I can see that. Yeah, so if I just get that up on screen. So as you can see, um, yeah, the treble is a bit sharper, a bit harsher on the new ones. We've got an additional peak there at about 8K that they didn't used to have on the old driver. But the new one is a little bit flatter, like unmodified. It's a little bit flatter down towards the base area than the older ones used to be. And then obviously if you add our, our damping kit, you get additional flatness on top of that and a slightly smoothed off peak at the top. So yeah, so that's, that's how to fit the damping kit. That's what difference it makes. Well, well that was it. Uh, the Seeing how the HD25 damping kit is fitted. And we've also had a look at the difference it makes, plotted some graphs and also checked what the old HD25 sound like versus the new HD25. So it does turn out they sound a little bit different. So uh, if you've got any other questions, stick them in the thing. If you want to see us experiment with anything, again, stick it in a message. If it's something interesting and we've got the bits here, we might have a go at it. I'll stick a link in the description to where you can actually buy this kit because if you buy little bits of us, it pays for more videos. You know, you know how it is. Anyway, uh, like the thing, subscribe to the thing, push many buttons. Push the buttons, push them, push them.